Hey, we've got ourselves a really interesting integral today from MIT 2013. This was problem 14. We have an integral from 0 to 256 of x minus the floor of x all squared dx. Okay, and this would be a really simple problem, except we have just one issue that I think we need to deal with, and that's just this floor function. How do we deal with the floor in an integral? And there's not like a simple answer, but usually what I do is I want to kind of look at it in cases and maybe graph it and just get a better feel for this and figure things out. First, quick review of how the floor function works. So if we were looking at the floor of say something like 4.3, if we look at this, this is gonna be four because it takes you down to the next lowest integer. And if we had say, let's say if we just had four, the, four, the floor of four is four because we're already at four. And then even if it was like 4.999, the floor is gonna take us down to four. So in the case we have here, I think what I wanna to do to get a better feel for how the floor function is gonna work is to just break this integral up into different intervals. Like we could break this up from zero to one. And then obviously we're not gonna write out 256 of these, but we can look at a few and get a feel for it. So I created this pattern where we're breaking this up now into like 256 different integrals, all with just an interval one long. And then let's just kind of start looking at them individually. So. For this first one here, x is gonna be x. Now our floor function uh, between zero and one, the floor is gonna take it down to zero. So we essentially have x minus zero squared. Now let's go on to this next one. We're integrating x again as x. Our floor between one and two, the floor just takes it down to one. So we're integrating x minus one squared. We can do the same thing again. We're gonna have x minus the floor between two and three is gonna take it down to two, so we're gonna have x minus two squared. We go on and on with this. I think we could just write our last value here. So we could have um, from, 250, from 255 to 256, it's gonna be x minus 255 squared dx. Basically, so what I have now is all these integrals taken individually are fine. These are all easy. Even this one, if I do a u substitution, it's just big numbers, it's not really a problem. So what I want to do is rewrite this in, in a more like general form. So we're going to have 256 of these integrals taken from some b to a of x minus a. Noticing, notice that this value here always equals our lower, lower bound, right? So we're going to have x minus a squared dx. And then what I can do is approach this with a u substitution. So let's say... I'm gonna make my u equal to x minus a, just knowing that's gonna simplify this pretty nicely. And then our du is gonna be just equal to dx. So then we'll make this substitution. We got 256 in front. I'm gonna plug a b in here. So for our upper bound, we're gonna have b minus a. We plug an a in here, we get zero. And then we just have u squared du. And we know how to do this, that's just the power rule. But what's b minus a? Well, we've set this up where our upper bound and lower bound, they always differ by one. We've created it that way. So what I can do is just take this out. We'll call this one, because it's gonna be one in every one of these 256 integrals. Okay, and now we're in good shape to finish this off. So we're gonna have a 256 in front. We're gonna integrate this. We're gonna have u cubed over three evaluated from zero to one. Now this zero value is just gonna be zero. So we're just evaluating, we're just plugging a one in here. Uh, one cubed is going to be one third. So all we are left with for an answer is 256 over three. That's it. Thought it was a pretty fun problem today at MIT 2013. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.